Hi, this is Emily from the Children's Literature Training Academy. I'm going to um, talk today in this video about the story of Diva and Flea. And I covered this in a children's book haul video that I also just uploaded. So I'm going to do a read through of some of this and show it to you. It's sort of a collectible book that would be more for, um, you know, it's, it's, I like it kind of like a coffee table type book, a nice gift book. It has beautiful art in it. It's a really charming, sweet story. It takes place in France. It sort of has this Parisian style. And I'm also reading right now the 60th anniversary of Strawberry Girl, Strawberry Girl by Lois Linsky, which is a Newbery award-winning book. But I'm not finished yet, so I will be doing a full review and analysis of this book next Friday. So please stay tuned for that. So let's talk about the story of Diva and Flea by Mo Williams and Tony Detrilizzi. Uh, Tony Detrilizzi did, I've talked about him before. He's known for the Spiderwick Chronicles, a beautiful Christmas book he, he that I covered in my children's literature holiday course. That it's probably also already on my channel as well. And Mo Williams has, done, has been known uh, for several of his illustrations and has been a Caldecott, an honor a winner and or nominee as well. So let's get into Diva and Flea a little bit. I love this book. It's one of my favorites in my collection because I love the sort of glossy pages and I love the art and it's a really sweet story about this cat and dog that are friends. And you can see sort of these beautiful black and white pencil type illustrations here. And we have the gargoyles as well. And so it has some cute little French Sayings here by Mo and Tony. And here we have the debut. It's kind of done like a play, like the opening of a play and in different acts. I love this book so much. So I will read a little bit of this book. Diva and Flea, chapter one, then. This is Diva's story. For as long as she could remember, Diva lived at 11 Avenue Le Play in Paris, France. 11 Avenue La Play was a grand old apartment building with a small gated courtyard in front. Many people lived in the buildings, kids, parents, old ladies, even an artist or two. Like most grand old apartment buildings in Paris, there was a gardienne who lived on the ground floor. It was her job to make sure that everything inside and outside of the building was neat, tidy, and safe. Diva was the guardian's dog, which meant that Diva was practically responsible for the whole of 11 Avenue La Play, including the courtyard. It was a very big job for a very small dog. Diva took her job seriously. Every day she would exit the grand front door, trot across the small courtyard, and stand at the building's front gate. From there she watched and guarded and guarded and watched. And if anything ever happened, no matter how big or small, Diva would yelp and run away. Diva was very good at her job. This is Flea's story. For as long as he could remember, Flea also lived in Paris, France, but at no fixed address. Flea lived wherever he was, which usually was somewhere other than it had been the day before. Flea did not even have a fixed name. Some people called him Puss or Midnight or Richard, but he didn't care too much about what people called him. He liked the name Flea. He thought it was a funny name because he was a large cat and a flea is a small animal. Also, he may or may not have had fleas. Flea did have a good occupation, a fixed occupation, however. He was a flaneur. A flaneur is someone or some cat who wanders the streets and bridges and alleys of the city just to see what there is to see. A great flaneur has seen everything, but still looks for more because there's always more to discover. Flea was a really great flaneur. First thing I want to say when I'm reading this book, it might make you think a little bit of Lady and the Tramp. I don't know if that came to your mind at all, but that's one thing that always comes to me with this book. I just love the charming illustrations in this story and how the book is laid out, how the text is laid out. Um, it has a nice shiny gloss to the pages. It's just a fun little book. One afternoon, this is chapter two, The Courtyard. One afternoon, Flea was having a particularly good time flaneuring. The day was barely half over, and he already discovered a stairwell that led deep under the streets of Paris. There, a giant room, giant rooms on wheels would suddenly appear and release large groups of people. So thought Flea, that's where people come from. Later, Flea found himself sitting in the sun, watching people who were also sitting in the sun, watching even more people sitting in the sun, 
Everyone except for Flea was drinking tiny cups of something they called cough fee. <laughs> this is pretty much what people do in Paris, France. Then inside Flea's favorite store, he saw a woman drop a giant piece of salami smack onto the floor. Flea pounced and snatched the salami before the man with the broom could even chase him out. And if that weren't enough, oh, an event that was both unusual and delicious. And if that weren't enough, that very same day, Flea happened to wander past the courtyard at 11 Avenue La Ploie, where he saw Diva for the first time. As soon as Flea saw the small dog, he was captivated. As soon as Diva saw the larger cat, she yelped and ran away. Flea laughed because it was kind of funny. He had seen many funny things in his life, but he had never seen such a small dog yelp with such a loud voice. After that, Flea would make sure that most afternoons he just happened to flaneur right by the courtyard of 11 Avenue La Ploie. It was fun watching the small dog yelp and run away. This went on for many days. Flea would flaneur by. The small dog would yelp and run away. Flea would laugh. It was almost too good to be true. Then one day, Diva didn't yelp or run away. Instead, she looked right at Flea's big face and asked, Are you trying to hurt my feelings? Flea had never thought about it like that. Chapter three, the mouse. The next day, Diva trotted into the courtyard expecting to see the large cat and to hear his loud laugh. But the cat was not there, it was quiet. Diva was surprised at how empty the courtyard felt without a cat sticking his big head through the gate. Then she noticed the courtyard wasn't completely empty. There was a small dead mouse near the front step. Diva looked at the mouse and thought for a moment. Then she called out as loudly as she could, who left this mouse by my doorstep? A small voice hiding in the bushes replied, me. It was Flea's voice. Diva was surprised a cat that big could have a voice that small. The cat came out from behind the bushes and walked to the edge of the gate. I did not mean to hurt your feelings, he said, so I brought you a mouse. You brought me a mouse, asked Diva. To show you how sorry I am, he replied. Diva looked at the mouse and thought for a moment. Then she walked over to Flea and said, this is the nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. But in the future, bring me a small piece of ribbon, okay? Flea laughed, and this time so did Diva. So that was sort of the end of act one, or like if this were a play, and here we have um, the next act. Um, I'm not going to read the whole rest of this book because it's, you know, it's quite, it's not, it's a little bit longer. It's not exactly something you can read to a whole child in one night. You know, it, you might take 30 minutes to read this whole book yourself. Depends on how much you stop to look at the artwork. Um, but I will put a link below if you're interested in purchasing, purchasing the book. I think this makes a great gift for a teacher. It makes a great gift for anyone who has children, uh, any parents have children. It makes a great gift for a child who's, you know, maybe a little bit older, but not quite too old. But just to give you a little flip through, um, the story is really charming. Obviously, you can see where this is going. It unfolds to them go, getting into mischief, running off together, being on their own, and making a great, wonderful friendship. It has a beautiful ending. It's a really charming story. <laughs> Au revoir, the end of the book. I really like this book. The biggest discoveries start with the smallest steps. And there's a very nice message in the book as well about changing your perception of others, not judging a book by its cover, and stepping out and embracing what you are afraid of. I love this book so much. It's just something super cute that I set up on my bookshelf. So I hope you enjoyed that. And thanks everybody for watching.